the new PlayStation Plus is a total ripoff. This is what you might have thought when Sony first announced the three new PlayStation Plus tiers. In this video, we take a closer look at the reasons the three new PlayStation Plus tiers may or may not be worth the price of admission. As we go through each tier, I'll summarize the reasons it may or may not be worth it based on your situation. I'm David Loving and you're watching Loving Tech Life. On this channel, I make videos about tech and gaming with tips, tutorials, and reviews based on my experiences. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I won't be going through the inclusions in detail as I've already done this in another video, which you may want to go check out first by clicking or tapping the card at the top of the screen. Here's a quick look at the essential pricing. So when it comes down to it, you're really just using Essential to play online multiplayer. Yes, you get some little extras like uh, bonus games, etc. Ultimately, you play non-free to play games online. So that's why you most likely have PlayStation Plus in the first place. Pretty much all the other little add-ons are nice bonuses, but this is you. Now, another reason you may want to just stick with the Essential tier is that if you are lucky enough to own a PlayStation 5, then you have access to the PlayStation PlayStation 4 collection. Now this is a collection of 20 games that are of really high quality. The fact that a lot of these games are actually doubled up in the extra and premium tier may mean that you're satisfied with these 20 games. They'll keep you busy for a while and you don't feel the need to uh, upgrade. All right, now looking at the reasons why PlayStation Plus Essential may simply not be worth it for you. The first reason could be simply that you don't play games online or at the very least don't want to pay for the privilege. The other reason could be that you mainly play the free to play titles like Fortnite, Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Warzone, things like that where you don't actually have to pay for PlayStation Plus Essential to play online with these games because they're free to play. Uh, the last reason you may feel like it's not worth it is that even though you do get some free games with the service, maybe two to three a month, you may feel like that they're not really worth it and you'd rather just put that money towards buying individual titles while they're on sale. Next, we'll look at PlayStation Plus Extra. Now, here's a quick look at the pricing. Here's a roundup of reasons why the PlayStation Plus Extra tier will be worth it for you. One great reason for subscribing to this tier is that you're a new console owner. Getting this tier gives you an instant library of PS4 and PS5 titles. You may also have missed out on the PlayStation 4 generation, so you haven't actually played many of the PlayStation 4 games. This tier is also really designed for those of you that play lots of different consoles of games you might be busy and time poor a bit like myself and you may not have kept up to date with all the latest releases this tier is also awesome if you have a family now uh, kids drop on and drop off games quite easily so you don't have to go out and purchase a game for them to play it for like 10 minutes and immediately decide that they don't like it with the playstation plus extra tier you have a large selection of playstation 4 and playstation 5 titles to choose from that they can try and play uh, for as little or as long as they like age appropriate titles as well so there's a little bit for you and a little bit for them the beauty of having access to such a large library of games is that there's no risk to trying games out. You don't actually have to purchase them separately, so you may actually find games that you wouldn't normally buy. Looking at the value of this tier in comparison to the Essentials tier, when you're looking at the yearly subscription, there's only a difference of about 50 Australian dollars. Now, 50 Australian dollars probably not go very far in purchasing games separately compared to the subscription service. You might get games, you know, a few games on sale, but when you put that towards the subscription, it gives you access to such a large library of games. For me personally, this might be the most interesting tier to me because I simply haven't kept up with playing all the latest releases. There's plenty of big hitters in there that I'm really keen on catching up on. It gives me a large library of games for my family so that there's some titles that are geared towards the younger audience. Now looking at why this tier just simply might not be worth it at all for 
you. You might be someone that just simply keeps up with all of the latest releases and you've pretty much played everything you want to play that's on this game list. Alternatively, you might be a gamer that really just plays one game. You get onto one game like Call of Duty Warzone or FIFA or Fortnite. You play that all day, every day, throughout the whole year. So having a vast library of games is of little interest to you. Another reason you may not go to this tier is that you have the Essentials tier already. You might even have a PlayStation 5. And like I mentioned before, you have access to this PlayStation Plus collection of titles, 20 fantastic titles. Another reason you may not go for this tier is that you've actually been a member of PlayStation Plus for a very long time. You've steadily been downloading those free monthly games and you have a quite a large collection so you don't see much value in getting this subscription to have access to maybe some of the games that you already have now i hope you're getting value from this content and if you are please go ahead and smash that like button now we'll take a look at the playstation plus premium tier here's a look at the pricing with the premium tier you might not care and just want to have the highest tier with the most games you are really keen to play the playstation classic titles playstation 1 2 3 and the remakes and you don't mind sony drip feeding these uh, titles to you if they're not already on the roster you might also be excited to have a large library to play titles that you may never have played before the prospect of checking out new games through the game trials really appeals to you and lastly again if you have a family the larger the library the better because then there's just more options for your family to choose the games that they like looking at the reasons why this tier just simply might not be worth it the first is the current state of PlayStation 1 titles. You might find that the current crop is quite underwhelming. When you look at the list of classic titles, you're looking for very specific games that you're interested in. They might just simply be missing from the list. Another reason this tier just might not do it for you is that there are subpar emulation issues that I mentioned in the previous video. The other thing about this tier is that you don't have to subscribe to this tier to play and own the classic titles. Sony are allowing you to buy these classic titles a la carte. So really, if you only want three or four titles, you can go ahead and buy those, not subscribe. One of the major selling points of the premium tier is the PlayStation Now streaming component of the service. This comes with its own drawbacks like lag and pixelation of the image. The other aspect of streaming is that there is no way to stream PlayStation 5 games. It really just focuses on the classic titles. Last but not least, we'll look at the deluxe tier. So for all of you that are in regions that don't have PlayStation now, we are left with the deluxe tier. So I won't bear repeating the reasons that the PlayStation Plus deluxe tier is worth it. They're pretty much a copy of the premium tier. Just chop out anything to do with streaming. But looking at the reasons they may not be worth it, well, it's pretty obvious. You get a whole $10 discount from the premium tier, but you lose out on all of the benefits of streaming, which means that uh, you also don't have access to any of the PlayStation 3 games. So ultimately you have a much smaller library compared to the premium. Lastly, as mentioned before, you also have access to buying the classic titles, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation Portable uh, a la carte. So you may just want to pick and choose the games that you want. Check out this recommended video from YouTube by clicking or tapping the screen, and I'll catch you in the next one.